Welcome to episode 85 of Shane Talks, where I was going to try to do a Walt Disney impression to start this, but I just don't think I can pull it off. So, just Shane, and I'm joined, as always, by the greatest co-host in the history of podcasting, Mr. Jason L. Mayer. How are you doing tonight, sir? Welcome to the wonderful world of Shane Talks. See, that was great. I should have just asked you to do the end. I might just make that the intro to the whole thing. Like, that was so much better than what I thought I could have, like, that I even thought I could do. We are talking about a lot of Disney shit today, because you and I just got back from an amazing vacation to Walt Disney World down in Orlando, where we got to spend five days with your brother, his family, and our buddy Joel. And we're going to talk a lot about that uh, coming up in a little bit. Um, first up is coming attractions, and I have nothing to talk about, so I wanted to see, do you have any coming attractions you care about that you... You know what? I, I, uh, I did not have anything for this originally, but okay. literally, while you gave me the extra time to put my youngest son to bed, uh, I came across an Instagram post today. Okay. It was Will Smith saying thank you to Martin Lawrence for them wrapping up filming on Bad Boys 4 which is coming out at the end of, at the end of June. So I In like the months? third one enough. Let's go for 4. Let's go. Okay. I you know, I agree the third one wasn't bad. The third one was enjoyable. Far superior to the second one. It's just a freaking piece of garbage. Yes. Okay. It's cool. I'm I'm gonna be honest. Like I think we talked about it on an episode or two ago, um, or maybe it was just us privately. When I saw Bad Boys Four on the release calendar for this year, and I knew nothing about the fact they even started filming, um, I didn't think that was gonna happen. So the fact that the fact they made a post that they're done filming, that's that's cool. That's good. I totally agree with you. Like I I didn't think this was a thing because I didn't know they actually ever started filming. I knew that they were talking about it for a while, but. I never heard anything one way or the other, but hey, they're done filming now, uh, cool. and it's gonna be here in like five months. So, I mean, like you said, you said months. June, right? June's yeah. three months away. That's that's nuts. Yeah, they they have to they have to have been editing it while filming or something. Like, yeah, that's crazy. That, oh, cool. I mean, I'll, like you said, third one wasn't bad. I'll give the fourth one a shot. Um, I do want to address, even though I don't have anything coming attractions wise, I do have some stuff that I watched over the weekend on your recommendation, because while we were in Disney, you talked about a couple of movies and told me that I needed to watch them. First one being a Disney film called Tangled. Uh, so I watched that over the weekend. It was very enjoyable. It was cool. It was fun. I like this isn't like a complaint about the movie. It's just kind of a complaint in general is like. A lot of the like big Disney movies, there's always like a song or two that like I remember and like you know take with me from watching the movie. I don't remember any of the songs from this movie. Like none of them stuck with me. And like I know Mandy Moore was singing that song during the credits. I like I still can't even tell you what the name of that song was. Like, and again, it it didn't affect the movie itself. Like I still really enjoyed the movie. It was just one of those things that you know the next day I was like. I don't remember any of the music from that movie at all. So I don't know if I at was supposed last, to. At last I've seen the light, the duet with her and uh and Zachary um mm -hmm. Levi, right? Isn't that his name? Yeah, Zachary? Zach Levi, yeah. Yeah, uh when they're on the when they're on the boat. Um I I love that song. I think that mm -hmm. that's a, a wonderful song. So um that and I, I just always have fun with the um with the <laughs> with the henchman song when they're in the 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 duckling uh um um cantina or not cantina what is that it's a pub it's a whatever right. it is yeah but yeah so yeah that's those, those are my two favorite songs from that musical so right on. i will say that i uh for the first half of the movie enjoyed uh how they used the horse because i don't know if i've ever seen like an animal character be an antagonist to that way like usually the animal character is just like this the good guy sidekick or whatnot so the way that he was actually like antagonizing flynn rider i was like oh, okay like that's that's pretty that's different like i'll give him props for that and and flynn rider one of the things i think i really enjoy about that movie the mo main reason i enjoy that movie i think is um is because of flynn rider and he reminds me of 
Rick from the mummy. So like, oh, okay. He, he, I, he just, his, his attitude and his, and okay. his, like, his, like, I'm going to charm the pants off of you, but also be scared at this point and then be courageous <laughs> at another point. Like, it's just, I thought it, um, it had the same kind of vibe to it. So I see that. And weirdly when I was watching the movie and I don't, I don't know why I had this connection with it. It reminded me a lot of the road to El Dorado, but not <laughs> plot wise in any way, like absolutely not plot wise in any way but like just kind of the character uh, i mean i definitely see your rick comparison but just kind of the character kind of like the vibe of like i don't know i don't know why when i was watching it i was getting a rodel dorado feel which i know is a dreamworks movie anyway but like yeah. it was weird like that's what was going on in my head when i was watching it i was like oh i feel like this plays the same way as that so that was interesting then the second movie that i watched that you've been uh telling me about for months because it is done by one of my favorite directors, but it reinforces the fact that I don't like when my one of my favorite directors does real-life stuff. I watched Oppenheimer over the weekend, because the Oscars are coming up next week, and like I've barely watched any Oscar movies, which, you know, anybody that knew me 20 years ago, I watched everything Oscars-related. The recently years, I haven't watched everything Oscars-related, but you you sold me on it while we were in Disney. You kept talking about how good it was. And like when you and I talked last night, I, I admitted the performances are very good. Robert Downey Jr., amazing. Cillian Murphy, very good. Like all of the performance and Matt Damon was really was really good. Performances, great. Movie, I didn't give two shits about anything that was going on in the movie. I literally did not care about the plot of the movie. I knew the bomb was going to explode. It's like watching Titanic. I know the ship was going to go down. Like, I know that they set off the bomb. I, I knew all that. Um, I know you and I talked a little bit last night about how I just felt like the last third of the movie was very political. Um, and since I'm not a political person, I just didn't really care about the the fallout from it and placing blame and blame shifting. And uh, I know you had a little different take on that. Yeah, I just I didn't see it. Um, I saw it as a revenge thing, not a political thing. Uh, okay. It just played out in the political theater is the way I kind of felt like it happened. But it it's um, you take RDJ's character and how um, fragile his ego is in that movie. And he gets shown up because of the fact that Oppenheimer is so brilliant. Sure. Um, and I just and so I, 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 yeah, I saw it more as a revenge thing than I did for political aspects. But I see your point to it. Um, but with and, all the and, like Nazi, Nazi interrogations and stuff like that that were going on, and how they were trying to make like play up his connection to Lawrence Pugh's character and and the communist the party, Nazis, the communist stuff. Yeah, like I um, could just, yeah. And and what I what I appreciate about that movie though is like you said it's it's flawless as far as execution. Sure. I will give it to you that I I wasn't terribly interested while watching it. Um, I, I think I'd probably give it like a three on my five scale just for the simple fact that I think the execution of it is. We did freeze up a little bit. We, uh, I am having some internet issues this evening, so we're going to try to get through this. Uh, there might be some tough moments, but, uh, but yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna to see if my internet can survive this tonight. But I think it's a, I just think it's a flawless execution of the story. I don't necessarily like the story. Um, so I gave it like a three out of five, and it's just because Christopher Nolan is the master of his craft right now out of everybody. Um, even if it's a bad movie, it's still a good movie uh, it's for me. Um, and the same way, kind of <laughs> the way that Tom Cruise does it from the acting standpoint, that he is entertaining to watch. That's the way I feel like Christopher Nolan attacks things. And the same thing with James Cameron. But I think Christopher Nolan might be a better storyteller than Chris, uh, James Cameron right now. So. Oh, I like hearing that. Um, I'm trying to think. So this is like his third. What's his? It Dunkirk, and then what's the other live thing that he's done that I didn't like? Um, there was Dunkirk. Because I know this was like his third movie that I didn't care for. Because he did the Dark Knight trilogy, 
He did uh, Memento, Prestige, and Inception that I all love. Oh, I didn't like Interstellar. Not that that's really a, a real movie, but I feel like he did like something else historical. Dunkirk, Oppenheimer, and I'm I'm just drawing a blank on what the other thing could have been. Uh, I don't got I got nothing. Okay, looking no, through no. looking through his list of writing credits, and I'm not seeing anything that lines up. Word. Sounds good. I thought there was three movies that he did that I did. Well, I guess there is because I didn't like Interstellar, but yeah. Cool. Uh, so yeah, let's move on to Music of 1999. These are albums that are turning 25 years old. Um, I don't know anything about this first one, but you might. Uh, do you know anything about Elton John and Tim Rice's Adia? Or Idea, or how do you say it? It's Aida. Aida. Um, um... Aida? It's Aida. Sorry, Aida. Okay. Um, so it's a musical and it's about um a um uh it takes place in Egypt and it's about a if I'm remembering it correctly, I, it's somebody like somebody who's going to be a pharaoh falls in love with a slave. And um oh, uh, and so and yeah, it's the it's kind of like a I mean, like it's a forbidden love kind of thing. They have to hide it. Um, Anthony, um, not Anthony Rapp, who's the other one? Oh, my gosh. From Rent? Yeah. Yes. Adam Pascal. Thank you. Adam Pascal originally played the first uh, the oh, role of Ramesses cool. on, uh, on Broadway. And I can't remember who played the the other the woman but uh yeah so he and he vocally he kills it as he does everything else adam pascal sure. so um yeah yeah it's a it's entertaining it was like hey we have the people who did the lion king so let's just have them um, do another musical. and um tim rice worked with um uh andrew lloyd weber for a long time okay. and years and years and they did many musicals together and so like elton john just kind of stepped in and took over the orchestration portion whereas okay. uh, they did all the lyrics if i'm remembering correctly so but yeah mm-hmm. it's it's a it's a good show it's a i like the soundtrack the show? have you seen the show i've never seen it i've just listened okay. to the music uh, i own it i owned it when people bought cds and uh <laughs> nice. so, and uh i went through a musical phase where i was buying a whole lot of stuff and that awesome. was one of and um but yeah it, it's a pretty fun show so uh so then i know you're a sammy hagar fan right i am i am uh, i was just looking at tickets, still looking at tickets to go this summer with you and david and michael and joel so awesome. yep i'm definitely down for that is the red voodoo album any good Oh man, I, I I'm gonna be honest. I am more of a Van Hagar fan than I am okay. a Van Hagar fan. Uh, his time with Van Halen was awesome for me. Something that I really really loved. Um, and I never. Um, I'm trying to. I'm pulling up this night. This you said the Red Voodoo. It's so weird. Why is it so weird? Uh, well, because in he didn't release any. In, in according to Apple Music, he did "Marching to Mars," which I remembered, um, but that was in 1997. And then he did another one, according to Apple, uh, "10:13" in the year 2000. But he didn't do anything in 99. Red Booty was the 11th studio album by American rock musician Sammy Hagar. It was his first album to feature the band The War Baritas. This album was released on March 23rd of 1999 by MCA Records. I don't think you're wrong, Shane. I'm just saying that that's weird. It's weird that Apple doesn't have it, but uh according to the I or I'm sorry, according to Wikipedia, it came out that day. The I'll... cover is him holding No, no, you're right. You're, you're absolutely right. For Margarita. Margarita glass. Yeah, yeah. So um I it's because I looked up Sammy Hagar, not Sammy Hagar and the War Burritas. Ah, um, gotcha. And so that so yeah, they released this album 
I don't remember any. I remember the <laughs> I remember the art actually ever, and I'm looking not catching any of those. None of them are ringing a bell. So, well, I no do worries. like Sammy Hagar, more of a Vagar fan. So, right on, sounds good. We had two soundtracks that came out 25 years ago: the Matrix soundtrack and the Go soundtrack. Feelings on either one of those? Uh, I love the Go soundtrack. The Matrix, yeah. soundtrack. the Matrix soundtrack, I think is a while it has good music overall like i i don't know with soundtracks i think of more along the lines of like music compilations and the songs that they use for them uh i just remember the rage song pretty much was the only thing that was right at the very end of the movie um besides that it's all just like techno garble to me like yeah, it all just yeah. runs together so Oh, and there's a Marilyn Manson track on there too. Oh, Smack I remember, right? is in that, isn't it? I think Maybe. Smack is in, is in that movie. Yeah. So, because yeah. I want to, they like, they freeze on one of the like that that lyric or something. Gotcha. That up, you, but you, yeah, yeah, Matrix is fine, uh, soundtrack wise. But out of those two, definitely Go is the way to for me. Absolutely, the Go soundtrack was so awesome. It was so well done. I don't know. We got a lot of Mount Rushmores to talk about, so we might as well go ahead and get started on those. Uh, you did quite a few polls, Disney related, on the uh, Shane Talks Facebook page over the last month. So uh, we're going to kind of discuss those uh, answers. So the first up is you did a poll that was name your favorite Disney non Pixar movie, uh, your favorite Disney animated non Pixar movies. Uh, so while we were down in Disney, we asked this question to Joel and Dave. So real quick, before we get into the community results, let's cut to Joel and Dave's answers. Uh, I love Frozen. Uh, I like Robin Hood. I like Hercules. And I go back and forth between Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. But uh, I'll go Aladdin. Rescuers, Little Mermaid, um, Oliver and Company, and Peter Pan. No, all right. Now it's awesome to hear what what they picked for their animated non Pixar movies. Now tell me what the poll results were for this. All right, all right. Do you have your four, Shane? That's the important part. Do I you do, have I your do, four I ready? I do have my four ready. Yes. Okay. okay. All right, because I've got my four ready as well. So. Um, when it comes to our poll on the Shane Talks Facebook page, number uh, four was The Lion King. Oh, um, okay. That did not make my list. Did not make my list either. Number three is Robin Hood. Robin Hood did make my list, and it is in the third position on my list. It is. I did mine like uh, in the order that they were released. Because oh, I didn't okay. want to really pick and choose out of the <laughs> four which one goes higher. Uh, but Robin Hood is on my list as well. So uh, number two is Beauty and the Beast. That is on my list and is my number one. Gotcha. That's the number two on our Facebook. I like Shane's face right here. I'm guessing the internet's doing something funny. Oh, it did. It froze up again. Um, so, yeah. I'll just go with it. Number one on our list from the Facebook Shane Talks poll was Aladdin. Interesting. Okay. That did not make my list. Did not make my list either. While I do love that film uh, and think of it fondly because it also, I saw it on Christmas Eve in 94 when it came out. 94. I think in 94 is right. Yeah. Christmas Eve. I saw it at Castleton 123. Mm. And on Christmas Day, liked it so much, we went back and we saw it at, they had moved it from in, inside the mall to outside the mall. And I watched it in four, five, six nice. um, for, for that uh, second viewing of that great and wonderful. Uh, I think it's funny because a lot of people are around our age that are participate in our polls Absolutely. and uh, our part of the game talks in our, in our, on our Facebook page. And so all like three of these literally come out within four years. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's true. No. 
three out of three years because it was beauty and well i mean sorry three can like the three main releases for disney because it was little mermaid Maybe. then it was beauty and the beast Maybe then it was Aladdin. And then, then lion it king. was lion king yep. so you're looking at three three out of three years uh yep. and a whole lot of people are in our neck of the woods so yep, you know, absolutely so um i just thought it was kind of interesting oh I, i'm sorry aladdin was 93 i think uh i think Aladdin was 92 wait i think you're right it was like december of 92 because it was 94 the beast was 91. 94 is lion king 94 is lion king 91 89. Is and 89 was little mermaid yeah okay but whatever the case may be the um so right around the same years yeah so these were all like the formidable years and like right around Absolutely. our time so uh and then everybody loves robin hood because like it's just the best it, so, it is definitely very very good all right so what give me your numbers give me okay, your top so my number four was peter pan i enjoy peter pan i think that's a really good one my number three was robin hood like i said my number two and i can't believe this is not on there is lilo and stitch like lilo and stitch is amazing absolutely amazing and then my number one is beauty and the beast what about you? What's your list? What's your four in in non non ranked uh, my order? Four, my four, yeah, and my four not ranked order is Peter Pan as well. Awesome. Yep. Uh, uh, just something that's always stuck with me. I love Finding Neverland, uh, mm -hmm. the the movie and the musical that's come out. Um, I enjoy. Uh, they did one called Pan, which or not mm -hmm. Pan. Sorry, I'm Peter Pan which uh, came out in like the mid 2000s uh, that had um, Jason Isaacs as yep. Captain. Um, well, and and what, I, what I love the most about that version I've said before is the fact that they had Jason Isaacs play the father and hook, which is the way that it was written in the original book. And I thought that that was really well, awesome. In, well done. in the play. Yeah. That's how they did it in the play. So nice. uh, yeah. I totally, totally agree with you on that. So uh, Peter Pan, Robin Hood, because, yeah, anybody who doesn't love a fox running around shooting arrows is stupid. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, cross dressing, cross dressing. Yeah, I guess so. Um, John dress up as women. Tarzan. Uh, oh, something about goodness. that coming out. That was, uh, that was what, 2000? Two, you know, uh, 99. Was that 99? Was that okay. 99? And like Tarzan is one that, like, I was telling, like, talking about earlier with the music, like, I literally remember all the songs from that movie. It is so good. Um, but you also have watched it a ton, so it's easier for those to That's stick true. in. I remember at one point saying that Frozen didn't have very memorable songs, and I was like, I looked back on that and saw that on like a Facebook memory, and I was like, what was I smoking? Frozen has some really awesome music. So, um, And then my fourth one is Lilo and Stitch. Three out of four is pretty awesome. You've got yeah. Beauty and I got Tarzan, so yeah, and I can't argue Tarzan at all. Tarzan would be in like a top five ish list, maybe top ten for sure. But yeah, Tarzan is amazing. All right, so we had another poll that you put up. You asked, um, what were people's favorite live action Disney movies? And uh, there's a lot to pick from here. And while we were in Disney, we asked Dave and Jewel this question also. So let's go ahead and throw up their uh, responses from while we were in Disney. Uh, I like Pirates. I like a movie called No Deposit, No Return with uh, Don Knotts is in that. Uh, I like um, North Avenue Irregular, which is a classic. And... Oh. I'm just going to throw it out there. George of the Jungle. Uh, Escape from Witch Mountain. National Treasure. Freaky Friday, the remake. And... Love Bug. All right. So Dave had a couple on there of movies that I had never heard of before. He kind of broke down the plots to those while we were talking that day. But... Uh, yeah, so some some Disney movies I'd never heard of um, in that group. What uh, what did the community say for these movies? We have Play Diaries. Then you had Cool Runnings, running in number three. Um, number two is Rocketeer. And then number one, 
It's Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, okay, very cool. Now, uh, I'm extremely happy to hear that the Rocketeer did so well on the poll because it's my number one Disney live action movie. Uh, I think it's my favorite comic book adaptation ever. Um, I, I literally love the Rocketeer. I did not expect it to see that much love because when I tell people that I like the Rocketeer, they're usually like, what? Um, so I'm happy. Again, maybe it's our age demographic with the people on uh, on Chain Talks, but that makes me happy the Rocketeer got so much love. My second one is going to be one that pretty much nobody's probably ever heard of. It's from 1989. It's called Earth Star Voyager. It was uh, it was a Disney Sunday night movie that they did uh, two weeks in a row. It was a two hour movie, so a four hour, essentially a pilot for a TV series that they wanted to do, it was not very well received. So the TV series never went into production. But it's about outer space. It's about Earth dying. It's about a bunch of kids that get recruited by essentially like space NASA. Well, I mean, I guess NASA does space, whatever the space program is at this point in the movie. Uh, and they're they're being sent on a 20 year mission or well 20 years each way to go scout out a planet to hopefully move all of Earth's people to eventually. But they're sending teenagers because that way they're only like 50 when they come back from this mission. Um, and then shit goes wrong in space and they get hijacked and they deal with pirates in space and all kinds of other cool stuff. And I don't know, you know, as a as an eight or nine year old kid watching it for the first time, it was pretty dope. So uh, that's Earth Star Voyager. The entire movie, which is only three hours when you take out the commercials, is available on YouTube. Um, and I highly recommend it if you want some really bad 80s sci-fi stuff. My number three is Tron. Um, I really enjoy Tron. Again, sci-fi stuff. As a kid, I dug it. I can admit that Tron doesn't completely hold up when I rewatch it now. I still like it for the nostalgia part of it, but I mean, it, it's a not as great of a movie as I thought it was when I was a kid. I did find out that supposedly they're making Tron 3. Uh, this is going to yep. come out next yep. year. Um, so I don't know the the casting and the plot sounds like it has nothing to do with the first two movies. So, I mean, I'm sure they'll find a way to connect it, but uh, I guess Jared Leto is playing a character in it, and he's uh, a character that's trying to escape from into the, the real frame. world. Yeah, from the mainframe, thank you, into the real world. I'll watch it. I'll, I mean, I, I like Tron. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's decent. Um, and then my fourth one is Flight of the Navigator. Um, again, sci-fi, space travel stuff. I dig it. It's a very... Those three movies are very obvious why I became so obsessed with like space and sci-fi stuff as a kid. Cause like those are the movies that were impressionable to me at a very young age. All right, sir. What about you? Four favorite live action Disney movies. Um, no particular order. Um, uh, so, um, the three Musketeers with Charlie Sheen, Oliver Platt, Kiefer Sutherland, Rebecca De Mornay, Tim Curry, um, Chris, O'Donnell. Chris O'Donnell. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I love that movie. It's a great it's, movie. It's a fun adventure film. Um, something that just uh, you know, it's it's, and that's all for all for one. All yeah, for all for with one Ryan, with Sting, Ryan Adams, Ryan Rob Adams. Stewart, and Sting. You know, Rob I love Stewart. that song. So, um, Three Musketeers. You got to give the love to the Rocketeer because that movie is yes. just fantastic. so absolutely. Um, that's there. Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't care what you think. Like that first movie, again. Like I, I just want to have fun sometimes, yep. and 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 it still makes sense. Like I don't want to be. I don't want to watch Fast and the Furious ten or eleven and like try to turn my brain off and be annoyed because physics do no longer exist in these planets. Um, I'm okay with pirates because it's got that mystical aspect and that fantasy thing that works really well in the first one. Forget the rest of them, as we Agreed. have talked about previously. Agreed. Get rid of all the others. That first one is pretty damn near perfect. Um, so, so those those are my three. Uh, the fourth one's really, really tough. And uh, I'm going to stick with the fun. So um, Sky High, like 
it Sorry? just was the perfect movie at the perfect time for me. Uh, nice. When it came out, I was managing, I was watching it with some fun people, and I just loved that whole Hogwarts for superheroes kind of aspect to it. And and on top of that, it had a killer soundtrack where it had a bunch of like 2,000 <laughs> people remaking 80s music. And it's what? like, so uh, like, yeah, t like there's... um everyone wants to rule the world and uh they, like there's tons of songs from the 80s and early 90s that are all redone with like 2000s flair with like vitamin c doing a couple of them and, oh, okay. and, and, and 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 they're not like the best covers by any means but they're still fun and actually are on my movie playlist of movie songs just because oh, nice. of the fact that they just kick in that memory of watching sky high and uh and like the guinea pig girl is just is just so <laughs> cool so um but yeah so that's my top four for for my mount rushmore on that very very cool um all right so we're gonna take a quick break here we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break from disney talk i'm gonna kick it over to our buddy troy who's gonna not talk about disney anything uh he's gonna give us some oscar talk so oscars are coming up next sunday uh, I mean, like three days after this uh, or two days after this podcast goes live. Uh, but yeah, so Troy, please talk to us about some Oscar stuff. Thank you, Shane. I appreciate uh, you taking a break from all the Disney talk so that we can come over here and we can talk to Big Troy. What's up, homie? How you doing, sir? How's your month been? Uh, we're going to be doing some, uh, some Oscar talk with you here in a second. But before we get into that, uh, just tell me how things have been going. Uh, same old, same old, I guess. Uh you know, I still uh just do my thing. Um, Very cool. Do you want to talk yeah, about the Oscars, funny. man? Uh, yeah, I know. Like you, you mentioned you don't really care that much anymore, but you know what? Some of us still yeah. do. And it's sad. I used to, I used to make sure I saw everything every year, and I think the year that they bumped it up from five best pictures to ten best pictures, that just I I gave up at that point. Yeah, I mean. I think the Oscars are largely kind of dumb. Um, yep. I don't necessarily think like they, they they never look like what like my top ten movies of the year list look like, and I don't think they do for most people's. Um, but honestly, like I just like the idea that it's like some sort of like competition for movies. Sure. I think it's like such a, hey, a don't dweeb. get me wrong. I'll talk like, shit I about it. Like, I will still be there on Sunday watching it. So I mean, it's gonna happen. It's like the Oscars is the only place where Oppenheimer has a chance to take Barbie in a fight because otherwise, like, Barbie's just kicking that dude's ass, like, left and right in the real world. And so, well, and, you know, I mean, we can let's address do this. It. I just watched Oppenheimer a couple of days ago. Jason and I talked about it on the podcast, and I was not a fan, didn't enjoy it at all. Wow. All right. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, I would suggest don't watch the Oscars on Sunday night. Uh, <laughs> and all today so what kind of oscar talk you got for me tonight you're gonna pick some winners you gonna what you, what you got yeah man i thought we could kind of do it like a like our fantasy football and you could kind of hold me to account picking winners okay, okay. Uh, all right. i've got good. 10 i've got 10 categories that i feel that i know are reasonable enough about to uh do this um and so let's just go and then we'll uh we'll figure it out from there Sounds like a plan. Uh, let's start this Troy Oscar predictions. All right, what's up first? All right, well, just uh, this one is not an official prediction because I think it's too easy. Um, <laughs> and because I don't really know anything else, but uh, for the, the best original song it is going to be I'm Just Ken <laughs> from the Barbie movie because oh. it fucking oh. rules. And okay. because that's the that's the way that the Oscars are going to like reward Barbie in the like worst way and most like kind of like demeaning way possible. Um, so you don't, and that's a real cause, fucking shame. Because the um the other Barbie song, the Billie Eilish one, won the uh won the other award, the um the Golden Emmys, Globe or whatever. Golden Globe, yes, our Golden Globes. You don't think well, that you think you think I'm just Ken's gonna win over that? I'm just Ken. I'm just Ken. Okay. Okay. The best. Okay. I got, I got you right. down. I got you down. Yeah, like I said, that's not like an official prediction. Like I just that that was just like an extra bonus. Like I, I mean, wanted to get like that off my chest. 
we'll, we'll put it down as a bonus prediction. But I mean, it's I mean, you're making the you're making the statement. Bonus. Yep. All right. And then another Sorry. bonus one for you. Uh, you can't actually write this one down. The boy and the heron is going to win best animated feature. I have not seen any of them. I'm gonna go see Robot Dreams tomorrow. Um, I just know that, and I know, and you know what? Like fuck Miyazaki, his movies are like obtuse and boring and lame, and I don't really enjoy them at all. Um, but so you know, take this Oscar and then you know shove off into the fucking sunset. Peace out. Man. All right, Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle, Spirited Away. Sucks, like, you sucks, like any... sucks. Like... Oh, you're ridiculous. Oh, Troy. Oh, you're crazy. <laughs> Best snare I've ever had, dude. Uh, What's no, Japanese please. for siesta? Like <laughs> that's what that's what a Miyazaki movie is to me. All oh, right, man, so, I never would have expected that from you. Yeah, dog. Let's kick it. Uh, let's go. So, uh, the number ten category: okay. live action short. <laughs> live action short. Okay, guarantee I've never seen. Uh, I went. I uh, fair fair fair. Um fair deal i went and saw all of the shorts programs at the can can um just because i could and so having seen all of the nominees i have opinions and this is what what it is uh so uh should win uh is this danish movie called night of fortune which is hilarious and like really kind of odd and like a touching like uh, touching film about a uh, late life uh, male on male friendship, like a, uh, and so uh, that should win. Uh, what will win is going to be the Henry Sugar movie uh, for Wes Anderson, and I hope he takes his Oscar and rides off into the sunset and fucking never makes movies again because that guy sucks, and that's a piece of shit. <clears throat> All right, you gotta, you gotta give me a second. My keyboard. The space bar decided not to work on me, so give me just a second here. Night of the Fortune. No, man, I could I could write these down for you later. Just don't worry about it. Okay, okay, okay. All right, I'm trying to trying to make sure I got a copy of all of this. So engage right. with me. I, I I'll send you a copy. It's right. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Right on. Cool, cool. All right. Turn all right. This so over. my prediction is that the the fantabulous life of Henry Sugar or whatever the fucking Wes Anderson movie that he made for Netflix is going okay. to win. I hope Wes Anderson goes up, he accepts his award, and he just gets the fuck out of my life forever. Yeah. And I don't ever have to watch another with you one on of this. I only yeah. like Russian. He, That's the only movie he's, he's ever done that I actually like. He's like precious, fucking pretentious pieces of garbage, like symmetrical crap. Get the fuck out of my cool. face. Done Look with at it. us, man. We disagree on Miyazaki. We agree on Wes Anderson. Cool. You know, sometimes, man. Uh, <laughs> Documentary short. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you, uh, the movie that's probably going to win and should win is The Last Repair Shop. It's a really great movie about um, these people who repair instruments um, for use in like Los Angeles public schools, so that like kids uh-huh. don't have to like pay instrument fees and like stuff like that. They take like old instruments and they make them like new again, and it's just like really fucking really good movie um it will win um what should win and the movie that i enjoyed the most was this movie called nine Nai and waipo it's about this guy's two grandmas like this chinese guy's two grandmas okay. um they one of them's like 95 and one of them's like 83 or something like that and they live together um they became friends through like their marriage of their children yeah. and um it's just a really fantastic movie. My daughters thought they were adorable people. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's on Disney Plus. Um, Nine Nine and Waipo. I cannot like. Uh, you should just watch it. It's like okay. it's like twenty minutes of your life that'll just make your life better. Okay. Um, cool. uh, the next one is animated short. Uh, okay. Uh, the winner is going to be this movie called 95 Senses, which is made by the guy that did uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Okay. Um, it's a really great, uh, I don't know, kind of like this rumination of a guy that is like on death row and oh. like having his last meal. And it's, but it's really funny. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's really good. It's uh, 
there's like different animation for different senses. Um, it's just like a really well done thing. It's beautiful. Nice. That's pretty cool. Um, special shout out to a movie called uh, Our Uniform and um, and this movie called Pachyderm, which <laughs> you gave me like one of the most awkward uh, like experiences I've ever had in a theater. Uh, okay. So, uh, long story short, like I, I took my daughter to go see the animated shorts, just okay. because I was like, oh, you know, blah blah, blah. and they, and they had a couple of bonus shorts that were both like better, and then the Oscar nominees on the shorts really? program, but we won't talk about them here because they don't matter. But this movie Packaderm came up, and we're just going along, and like there was a couple, there was a weird one before this, and the Packaderm comes on, and it's like lovely and it's like a little girl is going to stay at her cottage like uh, like a french little cottage and it's like in french and blah, blah blah and then like about halfway through the most like subtle fucking like sexual abuse on the part of a grandparent is taking place oh. and i was just like and like i recognize what is going on because like i'm a savvy film watcher and i'm just like oh i was like oh fuck and i was just like dude and they build it up to this thing and they you feel like it's something is like to the point where i'm like sitting there like basically like putting like i'm like nope like my 12 year old daughter i don't want her to see this and then so so it's like the most dev it's devastating but it's oh, wow. it, but they never like do anything other than like hint at it, and the lucky part for me is like it totally went over Maple Ted, and I was just like <laughs> we walked out of the theater and she's like I didn't really get that one what was going on there and I was just like oh no it was cool like whatever you know <laughs> like it, you know it's like some of them were just weird yeah um, <laughs> but, crazy uh, also if that movie wins like I will have no problem with it because like I said devastating like oh, wow. but, like it was like a I, moving but just put me in the most awkwardly okay. wrong situation <laughs> all right uh next up directing okay. oh, uh, you might actually know a little bit about here we go uh your best friend christopher nolan is gonna win yes oh uh, well, but he's waiting for, for such a scrappy movie uh man i did not enjoy oppenheimer at all that sucks but you think he's gonna win that, that's fine he's he will win okay. who should win is uh, Yorgos Lanthimos for poor things because that movie is rad, um, <laughs> and because he just it. he just does a lot of shit. It'll be out on Hulu, I think, on Friday if you want to okay. catch it. Okay. Uh, um, but I want to send a shout out to somebody who's not fucking nominated, and that's and who should be and should win, honestly, and that's Greta Gerwig for Barbie. Mm. Like, mm. I know that was the a reason you didn't like Oppenheimer. Nominated. I bet the reason you did not like Oppenheimer was the fact that, like, Christopher Nolan had just come off this run of movies like Tenet and fucking, like, uh, the other one, Interstellar, and, like, all these fucking movies. That, and, and then he makes this movie that's just, like, straightforward and kind of boring. Like, it didn't take really... It, there was, like, very minimal chance taking. Um, everything about it was, like, formal. And let me tell you, that that is the type of directing that, like, to me, it's, it's not should not get rewarded here. Like I am more impressed, flaws and all, with what like Greta Gerwig did with Barbie to make that a tangible fucking thing, as sure. opposed to just like some movie that everybody pisses on. You know, like how many times of like I mean like dude, Michael Bay made a made Transformers and everybody was just like, nah, that's not for me, dog. Like it's cool, man. And so, like, to make these things like a real tangible movie cinematic experience, man, you have to take chances. And she did the best job managing, like, this wild chance-taking enterprise with as minimal flaws and as good of a fucking vibe, story, set design, yada, 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 as possible. And she should have gotten fucking nominated. And it's a fucking tra travesty that she did. Or... That's the soapbox I'll die on. All <laughs> right. Uh, seven, uh, cinematography. Uh, who will win is uh, Hoyt Van Hoytingberg or whatever the fuck for Oppenheimer. Um, oh, okay. Because he did a lot in that movie. There were a lot of different looks. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of different scenes had different grains of film. Like had lot of, just things going on and popping off sure. of that. Um, 
who should win? Uh, Robbie Ryan for Four Things. Um, okay. Four Things is, Four Things has a similar feel to like Oppenheimer, like cinematography wise. Like it, mm-hmm. it shifts between color and black and white. It does things, but it does things in a much more like chancy, fucking like colorful, like steampunky, like fucking palette that's beautiful. And I want to give a shout out to a movie that I fucking hated, but looked beautiful, and that is Maestro. Oh, okay. uh, Maestro was beautifully shot trash. Um, <laughs> it's like if somebody took a shit on a sidewalk and it was just like the most beautiful photograph you've ever seen. Like, that's what Maestro is. And that guy deserves a shout out. Oh, uh, Matt Libatique or whatever. Oh. Um, let's see. Uh, I think this is number five. I don't know. Fuck it. I'm out of it. Um, supporting actress who will okay. win Divine Joy Randolph for uh, The Holdovers. She was, fancy, Holdovers. She was okay. sensational in that movie. Very good. Uh, should get some love in this category. Jodie Foster for Nyad, just drinking Diet Cokes and being rad. Um, okay. And then America Ferreira for fucking Barbie, just because like Barbie should just did. It should win everything that it's eligible for because <laughs> it's not eligible for enough. Um, no on Emily Blunt. Uh, I don't even know why she's nominated. Christopher Nolan hates women. Um, it doesn't matter. I don't understand why you would nominate somebody for doing practically nothing in yep, a movie. It's like, why, yep. it's like Florence Pugh got naked. Why didn't she get nominated? It's true. Like, Very true. But out of out, 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 off that soapbox. Uh <laughs> number four, supporting actor. Uh Robert Downey Jr. is gonna win it. Uh I can see that. And like I don't know why. Robin Hammer, the performances were all good. I can't I can't deny that the performances were good in the movie. I just did not enjoy the movie as a whole. So if RDJ wins, I'm fine with it. Uh the person that should win is Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction. That dude was okay. fucking rad. He brought it. Um I thought reasons, his but... performance like was what the movie kind of like hinged on and he was fucking incredible. Um if Ryan Gosling wins it for playing Ken, I would be <laughs> ecstatic. Uh because fuck yeah, that guy rules. Um Mark Ruffalo's got a decent claim for poor things. He is off the wall and wild in that movie. And then uh just no for Robert De Niro. He just he got he got one for showing up. And real so, quick, I want to yeah. say if by chance, Ryan Gosling wins Best Actor or Best Supporting Actor. Next month's episode, I want you in pink with a pink headband. Oh, I can even wear the fur coat. I got that shit. Yeah, yeah, that's oh, fine. Cool. All right, yeah, that's what I. That's if he wins in celebration, that's what I want you wearing on the next episode. Dude, if oh, you I- promise to watch Barbie before the next episode, I will do a halftime talk, even on an episode that I'm on dressed as Ken and we can just talk about 10 minutes on Barbie. Um, again, I do plan to watch it. I'm I'm worried that I'm going to run out of time before the Oscars, but it's on my you list. You don't have to watch it before the Oscars. Just watch it before next month's episode. Uh, okay. That's it. Yeah, okay. I, I can I can almost for sure make that happen. I But there's a couple of them, poor things, holdovers, Barbie, that I've told myself I want to watch before Sunday. We'll see if I get to them. That's why I watched Oppenheimer. Like, I want to watch at least a few of the fucking movies that are up for an Oscar. Like, back in the day, I used to watch everything that was nominated, and then I just lost that love for it. So, but I promise you, before next episode, I'll watch part. Promise you. Sure. Well, All right, where are we at? Uh, actress. Yep. Uh, they're going give, to give it to Lily Gladstone for... Uh... Oh, the... The Martin Scorsese movie. movie, yeah, flower yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. Um, but and that's fine. I I didn't really like any like none of these nominees were the people that like I thought like gave like great actressy performances this year. Um, my if I had to choose, it would be Emma Stone for what she did in Poor Things. It was just like okay. wild what she managed to accomplish from point A to point B in that movie, nice. and um. And then Sandra Huller just had like a fucking knock it out of the park year uh, with the uh, Anatomy of a Fall and the fucking. Oh, uh, yeah, I heard a good thing. Jonathan about it. Laser movie that was terrible. But, oh, you know. I did not hear good things from you about like, it. What a chilly bitch um, in, <laughs> in both those movies. And I feel like she deserves some sort of credit for that. Like, um, 
the definitely not is for Annette Benning and Nyad. She is the opposite of Jodie Foster. She is just a curmudgeonly old bitch swimming laps. And I do not <laughs> like her at all. I don't think she should get fucking nominated for that. And she's just a mean person. And oh. I didn't like her. Like I didn't I don't want to see her just nominated for this like one note, like just mean lady. Um best actor, probably Silly Murphy for Oppenheimer. Um, sure. I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, uh, I'm fine with that. Like, I didn't love any of these guys either. Uh, I like Jeffrey Wright a lot in American fiction, but like, I just feel like that's like such a long shot that I'm not just trying to give up a point in our fictional uh, scorecard on that. <laughs> uh, Paul Giamatti might sneak in. Uh, I really don't want Bradley Cooper to win for Maestro because he was terrible in that movie. I like much uh, of that movie. Made very clear. And then, uh, on that. and then Best Picture, like, obviously I would, like, shit a brick if fucking Barbie won. Sure. Uh, I would love my life if Poor Things won. Um, if American Fiction won, I would be happy. Uh, Oppenheimer's going to win, and that's fine. Um, gotcha. Basically, anything that doesn't allow the fucking uh, oh god, man, the Jonathan Blazer movie, I can't. Uh, the Zone of Interest. If that movie wins, I I don't even <laughs> come back to do this next year because I'm just like fuck the Oscars, we're done. Like, and I've said that a million times, and I always generally come back. But uh, yeah, so uh, you know, let me know how I do. I'm I think we'll I'm do. gonna go ten for ten. Uh. That's a bold statement, yeah. man. That's bold. Ten for ten, baby. I literally think that Oppenheimer is going to sweep a lot of categories. I think they're going to sweep some. Yeah, I, I think so. Word. I think. I think so. I think it might just be like a lifetime achievement award. They finally found a Christopher oh. Nolan movie that they okay. could like legitimately just be like, "Well, we can give it to him for the historical epic." <laughs> okay, that makes sense. I can see that. As opposed to Tenet, which is his best movie. Agreed. I'll go, uh, I mean, I don't know. Best, it's in my top three for sure. I think like, I, I okay, like the best three of what I think of is like Christopher Nolan movies because like the prestige was just kind of like a thing that like prestige was I don't good, really think uh, of that. Me Memento, Inception, and and Tenant are my three like Nolan yeah. statements. That's my Nolan Inception trilogy. Was, Inception was dumb to be dumb. Oh, Inception was genius to be amazing. And fucking Tenet was just like, you know what? Let's do some dumb, fun shit. And I'm like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> like, I don't even dead. care. It was great. They're just like, they're just like, John David Washington is like five foot six, and Elizabeth Debicki is like six foot three. Let's put them together. Fuck it. It's Tenet World. <laughs> Word. Well, man, I will definitely let you know how you do next month. And next month, I'm excited because you're going to be a guest on the regular podcast next month because next month we are doing our musical draft where hopefully you and Jason Richardson are going to guest with uh, Jason Mayer and I. And we are going to uh, draft four, or I'm sorry, we're going to draft seven categories of songs and see who can make the best mixtape out of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how that plays out. Um. I already know who's going to win. It's going to be <laughs> me. Uh, because I know your music taste is trash. Like, uh, and no, I honestly, my music taste is the greatest. I think I, I think you can name the seven categories and I will get everything that I want. Like, I can just pick what order I want them in. Uh, <laughs> I might just, like, be a dick and just be a troll and just try and steal, like, your favorite Creed songs and, like, Jason Mayer's favorite, like, Matchbox 20 songs and shit. And, like, I don't even know what Jason Richardson listens to, man. I'm sure it's like, I'll just be like, no, you can't have this Bell Biv DeVoe song, and then he'll be salty. And, like, we'll just fucking steal a bunch of good shit. Like, I'll just be like, all right, cool, man. Oh, interesting. It sounds like you have a very interesting plot uh, going on in your head there. Well, because otherwise, like, it'll just be me picking songs and being like, oh, yeah, dude, it's a song from, like, England in, like, 1989, and, yeah, never mind. You guys are never going to hear it anyway. Like you know what I mean? Like like what do you want me to do? Be a different person? Like I can be, but it's gonna be a trolley different person. <laughs> no man, I want you to pick whatever music makes you happy, man. That's the point of this. To see what you can put together. And I mean, 
I won't be surprised if I haven't heard of any of your seven songs, but we'll see. Maybe. I'm going to walk in with a list of seven songs for these categories, and I'm going to get every one. And the, the, <laughs> the game should be if you can take me one, take one off. Like, take one off of your list? Yeah, it'll never happen. But and I mean, I do have to give I do have to give a shout out. The this idea and concept came from the podcast that you and I both listened to the sixty songs that, that explain the nineties. Uh, ah, yes. Ross has done the uh, has done the musical draft, and that's where I got the idea for this from. So, looking forward yeah. to doing that, man. It's going to be some good times. We're going to talk about some good music, and maybe you'll educate me on some music, and maybe I'll listen to it. Man, never know, man. I'm not never even gonna. Uh, I'm not tripping. And then I guarantee I will have watched Barbie by then. And on the episode that you're on, we will do a halftime talk with nothing but Barbie talk. Yeah, we can do All the right. Barbie breakdown, man. Why it's such a great movie? The Barbie talk. Why it deserves more respect? Sounds good. And then, and then at the same time, you can lament over what it did not win, and we'll go from there. Yeah, women directors, stay up, baby. Yeah. All right, brother. I appreciate your time as always, and I will talk to you a lot in the next month. Yep. All right, we'll send it back over to Shane and Jason so we can get back to some Disney talk. All right, and as always, it's a pleasure talking to Troy. I appreciate his time every week. It's a very, very enjoyable to hear him talk about movies. Um, so yeah, thank you, Troy, for your time there with the with the Oscar talk. We're coming back. We got a third poll that you put up on Shane Talks, and we're going to now transition into our feature presentation. We're going to talk about our trip to Disney. Uh, we'll break it down kind of like day by day of what we did and, and talk about uh, observations and things like that. But first, you ask people on the Shane Talks community what their favorite Walt Disney World ride, or well, I mean, I guess you put Disney in general, maybe, whatever, what their favorite Disney ride was. So can you give me uh, like our, our top answers on that? Yeah, so uh, the this was, it had to be from Walt Disney World. It okay. could be from any of the four parks. It had to be down in Orlando, Florida, since we were down there, um, yep. and it had to be, and it had to be one of the four parks. Uh, it didn't matter which one it was, but that's what it boiled down to. So, as you said, uh, we threw this poll up on the Shane Talks Facebook, and we once again have a tie for the fourth place. So we actually end up with five. Coming in at number four is Avatar: Flight of Passage, tied with Guardians of the Galaxy: Cosmic Rewind. Um, All right. That's so right. I didn't write either one of those while we were down there. Um, I, I, and we'll get to it when we talk about Tuesday. I, I flaked out on you when we were supposed to ride Flight of Passage together. Um, so yeah, I, I flaked out. We'll we'll address that in a little bit. But yeah, did you ride? Uh, I know you rode Flight of Passage. Did you ride Guardians while you were down there? I did. Which part is Guardians in? Epcot. Okay, and we'll talk about how I did not make it to Epcot. I would have ridden Guardians with you if I had made it to Epcot. Number three is the Haunted Mansion over at well, uh, over at Magic Kingdom. So that was number three. Number two is Pirates of the Caribbean. Nice. No, you know, number one for our live action movies, number two for our rides, yeah. and number one. Uh, through this poll is Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. And I can 100% get behind that because that was an absolute blast to ride. Uh, we did it twice while we were there. And yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. And it was, I know this pissed you off, but it was fun for me to try to figure out the magic. And then we were actually hanging out with somebody who works on that ride and she kind of, explained the magic that I couldn't figure out. And I know you weren't very happy about that, but but I enjoy finding out how magic is done. Because you can't just let the magic exist. So no, because as I explained Sorry, it, it, to me is knowing how it how it how it's made. I enjoy that part of the magic. It did didn't affect the ride in any way for me the second time we went on there, having known the ma it's still it still works for me, man. It's still awesome. Still a great ride. So much fun. Still suck. It's so <laughs> but yeah, cool. Um, do you have your four personal favorite rides? My four personal favorite rides <laughs> are all on this list. Are they? Okay. Uh, so um 
Yeah, the best ride I've ever been on, no matter what park across everything, is Avatar: Flight of Passage. Um, if you have, ne- um, if you've never been on it, uh, recommend finding your time to do so. It is probably the only thing at Animal Kingdom that I love, mm-hmm. uh, besides the Festival of the Lion King, which we can talk about later. Yeah. Um, but we, um, but yeah, um, yeah best thing at animal kingdom otherwise i i think they need to do more to bolster that that park up um my one of my kids my second son he loves it there and it's because it's a zoo uh and he loves being at zoos and he's a very logical kid who loves his facts and everything else so he loves going to zoos and he loves to read and understand things about um the animals and life on earth and everything else um oh and um so but yeah that's my number that's my number one of all time awesome. so um guardians of the galaxy cosmic rewind is absolutely amazing it's a fantastic ride uh it's space mountain on crack um and uh next to that um it, it's hard for me to choose between that and star wars rise of the resistance which one i like more uh cuz they're both great but they're so different because one's a roller coaster just a kind of like a simulator isk kind of thing um and then see that actually i don't know if my fourth is on this list because i'm such a nerd uh i love haunted mansion but i don't think it beats star tours for me star tours is oh, fantastic okay. star tours is just so much fun so um yeah star tours is my fourth so nice pretty cool but I'm a nerd and I love Star Wars, so that's cool. Like, I mean, I could probably put all three of those Star Wars rides as my one, two, and three, and then throw in Space Mountain for my number four, and boom, there we go. I got four rides on there. Um, what about you? Yeah. You're four. I, mean, I, I, I literally just gave them to you all three of the Star Wars rides in Space Mountain, man. Like, you're, you're saying that you don't even like Space Mountain. I don't even know what Space Mountain is. What is Space Mountain? You don't like Space Mountain. Space Mountain's, I think. I think because so like when I went to Disney in like 94 or whatever it was when I was in high school, I rode Space Mountain like nine times in one day because I loved it. And I thought it was a lot of fun. But I literally think because I did that, I don't think I ever have to ride it again. And I lied. I and The more I think about it, I said that Star Tours is my my that fourth one. I can't yeah. take I, I I and if we're doing now rides, rides that yeah. exist current. Okay. Then it is my fourth. Okay. Um, if we're doing all time runs, Splash Mountain is fourth. Like Splash Mountain is fantastic. Was a wonderful, wonderful ride. So, but it's been closed down. It's getting refurbished. Yeah, it uh, it's closed down, refurbished. Uh, but yeah, like absolutely, Splash Mountain is fantastic. I love that ride. I wrote it. In, so that's my. Fourth. 21 when I was out there. I like Splash Mountain. Yeah, so, I don't know. Like, I mean, I I know it wasn't the most fun to hang out with somebody who's not a huge roller coaster person, but I mean, we did some of the fun ones and I enjoyed them. Um, well, let's talk about our trip. Let's talk about Saturday first. Saturday kind of a Kind of a slow day. We we hung around at our hotel a lot, waiting to get our room. It took them a long time to get our our room ready. So once we finally got in there, I know everybody kind of like went their own way. And like Yumi and Joel ended up going into the Magic Kingdom that day. And I don't know, I don't remember what Dave and his family did that night. But I know Yumi and Joel went to the fireworks show at the Magic Kingdom and had. They went to a lot. Experience. I was his family went to Disney Springs and went to the Irish dance, uh, the, the place where they do the Irish dancing, Irish step okay. dancing. So, uh, that's where they had dinner. We did. We went to the Magic Kingdom. You guys uh, were nice enough to indulge me. I wanted to go see the um, the fireworks because I don't get to see them often or and I don't love them a whole lot. But I've never like <laughs> as I explained to you at the park, man, like when you go with kids. You got to pay attention to the kids and make sure they're not moving and not, you know, Luke, Luke is crazy wild man and he'll disappear on me. Um, So it's one of those things. And so just to be able to sit down and just enjoy it and 
it is one of those things where um, I still had a lot of fun with you guys. Thank you for indulging me. And then we got to go right into do do some rides that I've never even done before. So I appreciated that a lot. So yeah, it was it was a very fun time. Unfortunately, the people around us were just not the most fun people to be around during the event. And a guy in a wheelchair ran over Joel's foot, and that did not go well for Joel. For while we were standing and watching, we had just some very annoying people around us that just kind of like wouldn't made shut it very, up. Yeah, wouldn't shut up. It's constantly talking. We couldn't hear the music. Like they were talking so much, we couldn't hear the music over it. And like, yeah, it was just. It, I, I looked at you at one point, and as not subtly as I could be, said that it sucks when people just try to ruin stuff for other people. Like it was just, it was just not enjoyable. Like, uh, but I mean, it, it was again, it was cool to see the fireworks. It was, it was very cool to experience that. I just wish the people around us weren't as shitty people as they turned out to be so that was disappointing um so yeah so that was that was our saturday that was it was a pretty chill low-key day didn't do a whole lot of stuff uh sunday was the day in my opinion that i went on this trip for sunday was like my mecca i got to go to galaxy's edge with you your brother jay your brother dave and joel and just had an absolutely amazing time where we built lightsabers. All four of us built lightsabers. And we're not going to talk a whole lot about that part because of the fact that we're going to save some of that content for our May the 4th episode. But man, that was everything that I had wanted and so much more to hang out with you guys in Galaxy's Edge and do everything that we did that day. And again, like we won't go into huge details about it right now, but like I look forward to the May the 4th episode when we talk more about how awesome that day was uh, building the lightsabers with you guys and then everything else that we did getting some some food and, and just hanging out and whatnot. Um, yeah, so I, I very much enjoyed our morning in Galaxy's Edge. Did you have yeah. a good time? Yeah, uh, the breakfast taco burrito, whatever, or like thing that we had was pretty tasty. Yeah. Um, we got to run into friends of the show, Samantha Northart and uh, uh, Matt McNear. We've gotten to run into them so that... Um, so we got to hang out and talk to them for a minute and uh absolutely meet, uh, small world did they happen to be down there for a for a retirement party at Disney at the same time we were there. That was so cool. It's so good to see both of them. And then um, to meet Sam's uh significant other, Mr. Justin. Uh that was pretty cool. The runaway railroad and it uh it ran away to the point where it stopped working and we had to exit the vehicle and be led out um of of the of the ride because of the fact that it broke down so uh that was cool uh the other thing that i really enjoyed is whooping everybody's ass at toy story mania like you guys could not hang with me so first of all i'm terrible at that game i was absolutely terrible i barely broke a hundred thousand points full time but like i thought i thought alan had the best score with like 190 or something i thought he was the top Forgetter. First round, I hit okay. 207. Oh, never mind. Okay, I didn't hear that. Okay, good for you. 207 uh. first round. Joel hit 103, so we destroyed everybody. Funny. <laughs> and then that second round, because they didn't because of the way that my uh my brother with what he's dealing with, they ended up letting us stay on and just went back to back, which was a bad idea because that ride rocks and rolls different ways and out of it kind of rocked my head a little bit too much. Um, mm -hmm. But going back to back is not a good idea. But on that second round, I'll give it to you. Alan hit 190. I hit 180. Uh, okay. So he did beat me the second time. But that first time I whooped everybody. There was yes, nobody. Did. I didn't hear that score. So, yeah, man, my arm just got too tired man like doing this over and over and then trying to switch to the other hand to do like uh, i couldn't i couldn't do it that was yeah <laughs> hmm. 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 okay very very nice technique you had there good sir no wonder you get such a high score yeah and i i, I think that, is that good is that good does that mean that, is that a good thing did i break I win... it <laughs> did i break uh, it I think going back to back on that, probably, 
is what ended up possibly contributing to me not having the greatest evening, and I didn't get to really enjoy uh, Fantasmic very much. Well, so we had we had yeah. lunch at um, what was the place we had lunch at? The Italian place. I'm a mama. I'm a, Mama Mama Mitas, Mama Rosamitas. Yeah, so we had lunch at an Italian place, and because we had lunch there, we got to go to we got special tickets for the Fantasmic show that night. But by the time we showed up at Fantasmic, like my stomach was just gone. It was not good. Tried to make it through the show, but I literally felt like I was gonna throw up. So about ten to fifteen minutes into the show, I went and hung out much closer to the bathrooms to make sure that I was. Um, quick and easy to get into the bathroom if I felt the need to vomit. Uh, so I ended up missing like two thirds of Fantasmic, which was disappointing. I got to hear it and it all sounded awesome. And I could see all the fireworks that were going up, but yeah, I got real sick on Sunday night and that was very disappointing because then I ended up missing all day Monday because uh, I was up most Mama of the Melrose. night. Mama Melrose, there we go. Uh, so I was up almost all night Sunday into Monday. I uh, didn't sleep very much at all just because I, I mean, I laid on the floor in the bathroom because I, I felt like I needed to vomit. I finally did around noon on Monday and I started feeling better, but I basically didn't get out of bed at all on Monday. Completely missed Epcot, which made me very upset because Dave and I were supposed to drink some German Steins together on Monday at Epcot and that didn't happen. And that was extremely disappointing. But fill me in on what you guys did uh, at Epcot that I missed out on. All right, so this is Shane. I'm interjecting here for interrupting here in the middle of uh, what we're talking about because I just pulled a Shane. And what I mean by that is I kind of just blew over, glossed over, kind of made a joke about what happened to me while I was in uh, Walt Disney World and didn't give credit where credit was due. So I need to kind of interject for a second and first off, give credit to our friend Dave Mayer's wife uh, Jennifer Mayer, uh, she took really, really good care of me when I was sick. And what happened uh, in the sickness was this was my first trip uh, since the heart attack. Uh, the first time I'd gone and done anything um, major or whatnot when I was on all these new medications that I've been on. And I didn't take a couple of things into account, like uh, my sugar intake. Um, or my water intake or anything like that. So after day two, I literally, I mean, I didn't eat any more than I normally do because my medicines make me not hungry. I wasn't drinking uh, nearly enough water because my medicines make me not thirsty. So by the end of day two, I had walked 50,000 steps, which is like four or five times more than I do in a normal day, you know, around you know, in my normal life. So I was walking a lot, burning a lot of calories, burning a lot of everything in me and was not replenishing my body in the way that it should be. Um, so I make a joke about how, you know, it was riding the Toy Story ride twice. And I mean, most, most of the problem was the fact that I just wasn't watching my blood sugar. I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't making sure that I was eating and drinking enough food and water to keep my body healthy for how much more exercise and things that I was doing. So uh, they had to wheelchair me back to the hotel that night because I, I literally was just weak and couldn't do anything. I did not take my sugar pills with me on the trip. So Jennifer taught me about, you know, using sugar packets, um, you know, that you put in coffee and stuff like that. She Taught me about carrying those with me. She fed me the right kind of foods to get my body back where it needed to be. And I, I, I owe a lot to her because I did not, I didn't think about any of these things. It was all new to me. But um, when Jason and I were recording, I kind of made a joke. I glossed over it. I didn't really give it, you know, the attention that it needed to. So I kind of felt the need that I needed to give Jennifer Mayer a, a lot of extra credit here right now just because. She really took very good care of me that day that I was sick, got me eating the right stuff, taught me that I need to carry sugar packets and that I need to drink a lot of water even when I'm not thirsty just because I was, you know, I was in 70 degree weather walking 25, 30,000 steps a day. So anyway, just wanted to cut in, interject real quick because I realized when doing the actual recording, I 
I, 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 like I said, I pulled a Shane. I just kind of tried to make a joke about it and move on, and that wasn't the right thing to do. So, uh, Jennifer Mayer, thank you so very much for taking care of me and teaching me what I was doing wrong. So, all right, let's get back to Shane and Jason talking. That was my moment of seriousness, and we're done. So we got a late start to the day. We wanted to make sure you were okay. Um, so we stuck around a little bit longer than normal. Uh, we got there. We got to walk around, um, and uh, we rode Soren over California, which is not the normal Soren that plays at Disney World. Normally, it's Soren over the world. Um, oh. They or um, I think it was the Wine and Food Festival that was going on, or something along those lines, that they were running Soren over California with the. Um, which was fine for the most part, except it seemed like they were, it was a bad transfer of like the film version or whatever that they used. Cause everything was quite like, <laughs> I've told you many times, I only wear glasses so I can see like perfect. If I'm not wearing glasses, everything just has this soft focus to it, a tiny soft focus. And, and it's mainly out of one eye, not both of them. Well, this one had soft focus in the transfer and I could tell mm. that it, because it was messing with my brain more so. And then also other people who wrote it at the same time. Um, it it was fine. It was cool. It was nice to see something different with Soren. Uh, but I, you know, but I love that ride. Normally, Patrick Warburton does your, uh, like your intro while you're standing in the queue. Um, and then, um, but yeah, hey, do drop. Um, so <laughs> we, um, but we did Soren. After Soren, we checked out the new Moana uh, area, which is just basically like a water playground. I would mm -hmm. imagine that it's going to be really, really helpful during those summer months when it gets to stupid numbers as far as the uh, heat goes. And then um, trying to remember what we did after that. I know I rode Frozen. I know I rode. Um, we we by the we were we went to dinner oh we rode three caballeros uh and then we went to dinner so after dinner uh while the show was happening we went over and rode frozen after frozen we decided we were going to go up to germany uh but during after the last like hurrah the last show for the night they uh and all the fireworks and stuff they closed down absolutely everything else uh we which sucked because we had extra hours due to the fact of where we were staying on the park so with us having those extra hours we thought we had more time to do and experience the world showcase mm -hmm. but everything closed down once the fireworks show happened so we walked all the way back to germany to find it closed uh we didn't get the steins that we wanted uh and then so we walked all the way back up front and then by the time we met up with everybody um i had a virtual queue for um for guardians of the galaxy and oh that virtual queue was in like 10 38 or something like that mind you this was like 9 30 when we were making <laughs> we were back up front and so i was like man this is like i don't know if i really want to stay for another hour just to ride this ride i've done it before and then i looked down at my phone and the virtual queue had jumped from being a 1030 like 1038 to like 1013 when we caught up with everybody and by the time i put my phone in my pocket a couple of minutes had gone by and i looked at my virtual queue again it said i could get in line and it was like 947 so nice. me me and my nephews agreed that we'd go and then benny backed out so it was just alan and myself nice. and uh so then we got, we went over and we rode guardians so which was fantastic i love that game that, that ride is awesome like i said it's basically uh it's basically space mountain on crack nice very cool so, and I, I missed all of it because i was asleep in bed literally the entire day yep so, that sucks that was a bummer uh so then we can go over to tuesday tuesday we had an amazing breakfast together and then we went our separate ways so we'll talk about that but uh, let's talk about breakfast real quick. It was a breakfast that you really wanted to do, and I'm glad we made it happen. Yeah, uh, it's my favorite food service that I can. Besides, um, I think Be Our Guest is pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, and so Be Our Guest and Ohana are my two favorite dining experiences uh, so that you get uh, you get a Disney characters that come through. 
but uh, Ohana is a family style breakfast and they have a specific kind of juice, which this time around seemed like they might have watered it down a little bit because it wasn't as strong as it normally is. But I still really enjoyed it. But Ohana is wonderful. If you've never been, I highly recommend making it a stop on your tour of Disney World. So Absolutely. The food was very delicious. Um, kind of disappointing with all the medicines that I'm on that I don't eat as much as I used to. Um, so I get full very quickly. Uh, but my, my plate of food was absolutely delicious. And I really wish I was hungrier to eat more because, yeah, that food was all really, really good. So um, I know that was we didn't have the reservation for it until like a day or two before we were going to go. And then we originally had a 730 reservation. And then the night before, when we were talking about how much it was going to suck getting up that early, happened to jump on there and find a 1030 reservation. So it was very, very much better morning going at 1030 instead of trying to get up and go to the 731. So I'm glad that all worked out much better for us. So the four of us guys went to breakfast together that morning, and then we uh, we split off. We went our separate ways that day. Joel and I went to Universal for the day, and you went to the Animal Kingdom. And I specifically did that because in 21, when I was out there, I gave zero fucks about the Animal Kingdom. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't have a good time there. It was nothing that I cared about. But I told you that I would come back at the end of the day and ride Avatar with you, but I didn't. So we'll get to that in a minute. But... First thing, I went to Universal. I got to do the Harry Potter stuff, which was, I'm not the biggest Harry Potter fan, but I do enjoy it. I do enjoy the movies overall. I thought it was, you know, fantasy, cool stuff and whatnot. But I wanted to experience the stuff they did at Universal because I enjoy movies and stuff like that. And I don't know when I'm ever going to be back down in Florida to have that experience. So Joel, thank God, went with me because I don't know if I would have been able to do that on my own. Um yeah, having him be my navigator and show me where to go and show me what to do was awesome. Drank both versions of Butterbeer, the regular and the frozen, and they were both delicious. Um, enjoyed both of them. Went and saw the show at the Wand Place, bought a wand while I was there, uh, did the train ride, walked around the castle. The The castle part wasn't as exciting or anything as the Diagon Alley part, but still really happy I did and then just kind of wandered around Universal looking at like the Jurassic Park stuff and looking at the superhero stuff and it was just cool to go over there and and, and get to experience that um you and I went back in what was that 2007 to Universal yeah so it was enjoyable to kind of see how things were different and how they changed since then and whatnot so really happy that I went over there really happy that Joel went with me so that like I said because he Knew a lot more than I did and was able to kind of guide me through everything that I had going on. What did I miss at the Animal Kingdom? Animal Kingdom, you missed seeing a friend of the show. Uh, awesome guy that I've known for a very, very long time. Going on, oh, geez, it's probably, tw uh, it's 25, 27 years now. Mm -hmm. Something like that that I have known. Mr. Drew Stafford, who was wonderful enough to get VIP treatment for uh this is the second time that he has been so nice and generous to do so for my family and uh myself family and friends and uh so we got to go watch that show and then after the show we got to do a vip meet and greet with the with the uh, cast and got to take pictures with them and got to talk to him a little bit about his bouncing baby boy that should be that's due this week and should be here any day now. So awesome. Good for him, man. Yeah. I was very jealous when you sent me the photo of, of him. I really am sad that I miss getting to hang out with Drew. Drew's awesome. Yeah. So um, besides festival of Lion King, my brother Dave took me on a ride that I'd never been on before when we first got there and we're waiting to meet, meet up with everybody. And that is uh, it's tough to be a bug, which is underneath <laughs> a tree of life. Mm -hmm. And I had never done it before. Can't I can't remember doing it before. But anyway, and and in the last time, if I had done it, it would have been 2015. I don't remember doing it, but uh it was a lot of it was it's a cute little show, but apparently they're getting rid of that and they're gonna do something different down there. Oh. Um so I, at least I got to see it before that before they got rid of it and uh and then got to ride flight of passage again which was just the absolute best 
it's just such a good ride. Um, and then after riding that, I grabbed a beer, uh, which was a green beer that looks like something that you would buy at St. Patty's Day, but it was basically a, like a blue moon. Um, sure. and it was, it was, it's something ale and it's, um, it's something in Pandora over in animal kingdom. So I had that in a giant pretzel. It's like their regular Mickey pretzels are like, you know, like maybe the size of your hand. This one's definitely the size of two hands and it comes with beer cheese. It was mm. the beer cheese was delicious. Um, and then I did uh, something else I'd never done before, which was the Navi River Journey, which is basically mm -hmm. like the three caballeros, except you're in the world of Avatar. So you're watching creatures move and lights change. And at the end, they have an animatronic of a shaman from like the Navi. Yeah. And and she's pretty awesome. And she she's giant and she's moving her hands around and stuff. And she's got great fluid motion uh and so the animatronic is pretty dang awesome to watch move um and uh yeah so that was that was pretty much what we did on that day on tuesday right on well and then so i said i would talk about why i why i bitched out on you and i didn't end up riding uh avatar with you because by the time we got back from universal it was a it was around eight o'clock when you guys were going to dinner at boma and uh, so I knew you were going to be leaving the Animal Kingdom to go to dinner. Well, honestly, at that point, I thought it was still at the Animal Kingdom. I didn't know you were leaving the Animal Kingdom, but whatever. Since you guys were getting ready to go to dinner, I just made the decision to use my park pass for that day to go back to Star Wars land because I just love Star Wars so much. And so, like, I just went back to Star Wars land and I just hung out and I kind of wandered around and I got some food and I got uh, an alcoholic blue milk while I was there. Um, I did not suck it off of a nipple or anything. They literally like gave it to me in a glass. Um, but so I got some blue milk and I got some food and I kind of just enjoyed the ambiance of, of of Batu at night. There was a bunch of people walking around with their lightsabers and so like they had them lit up while they were walking around and it was just it was fun and cool to just like be around that environment in, at night and just absorb it all in. Like it was obviously a blast when the four of us were there and I don't it wasn't better being by myself but like i just it was it was something fun for me to do to go back and just kind of experience that on my own and to chill and i bought a bunch of stuff star wars related that night that i don't need to own and 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 there's no reason for me to own but i wanted it so i bought myself a bunch of star wars stuff uh additionally while i was there so but yeah so that's why I did not meet up with you at the Animal Kingdom that night to go ride Flight of Passage, and I'm sorry, and we will maybe eventually one day ride that ride together if we ever do another Dude's Disney trip. But how was dinner at Boma? Dinner at Boma's fine. Uh, it's another buffet-style thing. Best thing that's there is the Zebra Domes, which is like a chocolate mousse with a, like a, a light, like, um, like a light um, cookie on the bottom, and then like mousse on top of that and then it's like covered in chocolate and it's it's really tasty um it's definitely the best thing that's at that spot i like boma's breakfast more so than i like their dinner Absolutely. and yeah you were missed but i still got to ride my favorite ride of all time so whether or not you ever ride it is on you you had the opportunity <laughs> to ride it with the coolest guy of all time uh but and you just chose not to, but it's all right. I know, man, and I'm sorry. And and like I said, my original plan was to come back there and ride it with you when I got back from Universal, and then I just I made very selfish choices instead. Hey, we're not down there all the time, so you might as well enjoy it when you're down there. So that's what you wanted. I'm happy that you got what you wanted, so and that you did your time on the things that you wanted to do. So yeah, absolutely. So then we're going to come to Wednesday, our last day there, kind of just kind of a chill day. Went back to the Magic Kingdom and just kind of chilled around, rode a couple of rides with Dave. I think we could still get on Tron right now if we try. <laughs> I knew you were going to say this. Yeah. So uh, why, don't you, why don't you tell the story about our, our Tron Q fiasco? So I messed up and I accidentally overslept that morning. I didn't jump into the uh, digital virtual queue at 7 a.m. like I was hoping to. Uh, due to that fact, we didn't get on 
as early as we would want to, or we didn't get in the queue as early as we wanted to. So um, I overslept, accidentally overslept and ended up sleeping through the seven o'clock virtual queue sign up. So I missed that. Uh, I do apologize because we might have made it on there if I had been awake, but whatever the case may be, I was really tired. <laughs> tired um in the park virtual queue for the one o'clock and once we did that um david or myself i can't remember who got into it but got us in the virtual queue so we were in the virtual queue for like our spot was like 116 and when we got in they were at like 60 i yep. think like 50 That's or great. 60 yep. uh and they just give you a group and you're they're like 50 to 60 can come on right now but then you have to wait until they get to your number. So then all of a sudden, uh, so we kept an eye on it and kept an eye on it. And we rode, what, Seven Doors Mine Train. We got to see um, Drew Stafford in the uh, parade that day. Um, we also rode. Oh, yeah, real, real quick. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up a video here um, of the parade. And there may or may not be somebody whose name may or may not have already been mentioned, who may or may not be friends with somebody who may or may not be in this video that I'm going to show. So uh, so we got to see the parade. We got to see, um, we rode Seven Doors. We rode Pirates. We were, we missed Haunted Mansion that day. We went and did the Hall of Presidents. <laughs> which got me a 20 minute nap That's what I was and, I was, and I wasn't snoring loud enough for Shane to have to wake me up. So it was, it was a very low, I, subtle snore. I, it didn't it, get to the point up. where I felt like the need to wake you up. Uh, so we got that in there. What else? We, um, we had some <laughs> macaroni and cheese covered hot dog for me. Uh, you had a macaroni and cheese covered tater tots for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, what else? Well, did we do anything else that day? I can't remember us doing anything else that day. We did so, walk around a lot. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but, uh, so the, the it was kind of cool. And then, uh, and then the running, the running joke became around four o'clock. We were like 30, it was 3 30, 3 30. We actually like left Dave and his party because our flight was at eight Oh five, which means we had to be, we should be at the airport at 605, which then turned into, well, Shane didn't want to cut it too close because originally we were going to ride the tragic bus, which is what my brother David named the, uh, so it, Disney used to have a magic bus, which you could ride free of charge from the airport to Disney and back as long as you were staying on Disney property. So it was called the magic bus. It was run by a company by mirrors. Uh, David renamed it the tragic bus whenever you're leaving Disney world. So uh, the, the tragic wanted you 15 minutes before uh, that bus would arrive at four fifty, And we were in, uh, we were on the bus leaving magic kingdom coming back to our hotel at 435 when we should have been at the check-in spot at that point joel was like hey i haven't bought a ticket to be on the mirrors tragic bus so let's do uh we'll just uber and we we should have we should have rolled the dice we were we were so early at the airport yes we were there was no line <laughs> security yeah, we literally like nothing. So we got there at like 520. By like 535, we were on the other side of the security. We and and then on top of that, our plane ended up like being like half an hour late yeah. of departing. So it was just one of those things where it's like if we would have went, we would have been on Tron. We would have we could have like yeah, we could have we, done it. We were it. in the Uber on the way to the airport when our group hit. And yeah. we literally considered Thought having about our it. Uber driver go to the park for us, and we would have paid him extra to wait for us to run in, ride the ride, and then be waiting for us to take us to the airport afterwards. He didn't seem super interested in doing that. He was also driving a Pikachu-covered vehicle, which was hilarious. It's a very weird looking car. I don't, yeah. I would never do that to my vehicle, but no. um, 
but hey, it's gimmicky. It, it's gimmicky. It lets him be seen. It's a memorable car. I get why you might do that if you're an Uber driver. But yeah, so we missed out on Tron, but it gives me something to look forward to the next time I go back. So, word, yeah. So, I I agree, and maybe Tron would have been in my top four favorite rides if I had gotten to ride it. Never know. All right. Well, this was a like this was a great episode. I love talking to you about all this stuff, but it was absolutely miserable as far as my internet connection goes. So, um, I apologize for how crappy this is probably going to turn out when I edit it, but. Uh, yeah. So thanks for reliving all of that fun adventure with me, talking about a bunch of Disney stuff. Um, our April episode is going to be, uh, hopefully, my plan is to do a musical draft episode. I want to have you, Jason Richardson, and Troy draft essentially like a mixtape with me. I'm going to have seven categories. You can pick any of the songs in any order that you want, but once somebody else has picked a song, you're not allowed to pick it for your mixtape. And I just want to kind of draft some music together and see what we can all put together for, for our mixtape. So that's the plan for the April episode. Why do you look so skeptical about this? It, it cracks me up because you say this, right? And like, uh -huh. I could see Jay Bird and I overlapping quite a bit, but we know Troy is just going to pull out the weirdest shit of all time. You are so, I, I believe you to be 100% correct about that. I will probably not have heard any of his seven songs that he picks. So, That's right. Yep. Yep. So we'll, we'll see how that goes, but it could be fun. It could be interesting. And maybe we'll make an Apple Music playlist out of it when we're done. Sounds cool. Sounds cool. Cool. All right, man. Well, thank you, uh, anybody who suffered through my terrible internet with us uh, and listened to us talk about the happiest place on earth and how much fun that we had while we were there. So again, Jason, thank you for making that trip happen. Thank you for putting it all together and convincing everybody to go. It was a blast to make it happen, man. Thank you so much for everything. And we will be back on April 1st.